forwarding. Um, so we run through the audio setup wizard. Please make sure that you can hear and should you wish to, when we have a question section, um, ask questions as well, either through the text chat or um, with your mic. Most people find it's best to use the system with a headset. Uh, there's the text chat panel here on the left-hand side. Um, so it's very easy for you to um, contribute a question as we go through the session. It will considerably help the moderators today if you just prefix any questions with a Q. And if you have any queries or technical issues, just use the moderators tab there to contact us and we'll do our best to help you. So here's the topic for today. A look at Wikimedia, the world's largest OER. And as somebody who's much more familiar with little OER, I'm really looking forward to finding out more about the world of large OER. So let me hand over now to Martin, who's going to take us through what Wikimedia is and how it already considerably um, contributes to our work. OK, thanks very much, Teresa. That's, uh, uh, great. I like the phrase little OER. I think I'll use that to describe some of my work in the future. So yeah, I like to interact with online things in a meaningful way, not just give them a thumbs up or thumbs down. And I've contributed as a volunteer to Wikipedia and related projects and been lucky enough to, to do so in a, in a job for JISC, for the Bodleian Libraries, and as of this week, I'm back at the Bodleian Libraries, but working across the University of Oxford. But I also have a, a day job at the University of Bristol working on open education resource projects. So this is, the talk is about the intersection of those things, really, and about sharing and creating uh, resources. Um, and there'll be in sections. So there'll be about three points where I take a break. I'll give an initial overview of why we're saying Wikimedia rather than Wikipedia and uh, trying to answer the question, how much open educational content is there? How many open educational resources are there? Which turns out to be uh, actually a very difficult question. Then from the point of view of sharing digital files, what can Wikimedia projects do to help that? And uh, some, uh, some advice and some warnings. Then I want to look into learner-created content on Wikipedia, you'll be surprised of how many articles on Wikipedia are actually written by students as part of their course. And finally, I want to look at Wikibooks and Wikiversity, which are related, less known projects, and, uh, but maybe platforms for sustainability of things that we're creating, but, but the little OERs that we're creating. Uh, so that's the sustainability section of this. And then I've got a few uh, conclusions at the end. So I'll stop after the overview and the sharing in the Wikipedia section. But since this is Open Access Week, I wanted to go back to the manifesto of the Open Access Movement and to their promise of what would happen as a result of, of Open Access, of research outputs not just being publicly available for free, but being freely remixable and shareable by anyone. And they said it would accelerate research, enrich education, share the learning of the rich with the poor and the poor with the rich, lay the foundation for uniting humanity in a common intellectual conversation in quest for knowledge. And that's a really ambitious set of goals. Uh, working in a university on open education projects and with repositories and so on and sharing stuff under Creative Commons licenses it's easy to think it's a struggle. We're not making headway, or are we making this big transformation of the world uh, that the open education and open access movements promise? So it can seem a struggle, but I want to remind people that the top informational website is an open educational resource. Wikipedia is one of the top most popular sites on the web. There are more popular sites, things like Google and Facebook, but there are things like search engines and social networks. They're finding tools for information. The top informational site with, with content to explain different topics is Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is open in a sense. It's freely shareable, remixable uh, by anyone for any purpose. And we don't just on Wikipedia create 
and run a very popular website, we create knowledge and culture in a form that people can take and reuse and make new things out of it. So this historypedia.com isn't part of Wikimedia, isn't part of that group of sites, but it's a separate site that takes data in, in form of birth and death dates, uh, images, uh, and Wikipedia articles, uh, educational text. It takes those things and we mix them into something different. So you can go to this timeline address and you can type in battles of World War I or composers for loot, anything that's a category on Wikipedia. So this is Age of Enlightenment. You type in the category and almost instantly you get an interactive timeline. Uh, these things you can zoom in, you can embed it in other sites. Uh, each of these entries is, gives, brings up the mobile version of Wikipedia. So if you don't know who somebody was, you bring up their biography in the window. So this, it's a software layer to stuff that already exists, but it's a tool for creating thousands and thousands of fantastically colorful and interactive uh, educational things that, that are useful. Another example, this is the Wikidata, so I'll explain Wikidata in a bit. This is a, a query of, of Wikidata uh, viewed as a map, and these are birthplaces of composers. And when you click on a particular uh, birthplace, it'll say who that composer is and give you an image. And uh, so this is just one query. The query could be customized to show other information, like the birth date of that composer, or it could be restricted to a particular era of composers. Or it doesn't have to be composers, it could be Nobel Prize winners, it could be sculptors, it could be biologists. And it doesn't have to be people, it could be institutions of higher education or festivals or battle locations. And you can have different information come up. So this is all drawn ultimately from Wikipedia and other free data sources. And you could get the same information if you were prepared to click through thousands and thousands of Wikipedia articles, but this is a more accessible and, again, interactive and involving way to access that. How many of these maps are there? Well, how many queries can you put in? There's, there's, uh, there's tens of millions of data points. Um, uh, there's different ways to visualize things. We've seen a map, a timeline. There could be a tree diagrams, other ways. Um, so. Uh, these tools, this query tool and the Historypedia tool, represent huge numbers of new -ish open educational resources. So we are winning this, the, the volume of stuff. Uh, although uh, submissions to open educational resources are maybe tailing off, things that aren't uh, atomic learning objects in a zip file in a repository uh, they're depressing, but other kinds of uh, open educational content are flowering. So I've mentioned Wikimedia, and I've originally mentioned Wikidata there. Wikimedia is a broader term than Wikipedia. It, it encompasses Wikipedia and the sister projects. Uh, so there's 11 projects, and there are the software development, there are events, there are things that support that. So these all uh, serve some sort of uh, educational or research purpose. And they're all free and open in every sense. You may have heard the expression, how open is it? So uh, legally, very free licenses, uh, free for use by anyone for any purpose, um, maybe with a share-alike uh, requirement, uh, hosted by a charity. So the other big names on the web give you stuff you can use for free, but in the context of creating shareholder value because they're targeting advertising at you or they're tracking your, what you like and are interested in to, bring, uh, to create a marketing profile. Wikimedia just exists because of people believe that a world where everyone has access to knowledge is a better world. And uh, the Wikimedia Foundation hosts the servers that, that run these projects but that doesn't edit the content. The, all of these projects have volunteer communities that run and maintain and edit them. And they're massively multilingual, all of them, in that we're serious about bringing this, this, uh, these services to as wide an audience as possible. So I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to go through all of the projects. There's just four or five that take my interest and I think are relevant to this audience. 
Uh, I'll give an overview here of an example of how some of them work together. So you're familiar with Wikipedia having text articles with images embedded. Those images usually come from Wikimedia Commons. So the digital media, the images, the photos, maps, diagrams, video clips, whatever, are on a Wikimedia Commons um, from where they can be used to, uh, to illustrate any other site. Uh, source text, if you're doing historic stuff, there's a lot of uh, out of copyright text on Wikisource. So this is the free library of poems, novels, constitutions, reference works, um, all kinds of text that's freely shareable. And Wikidata is the newest project and uh, the one I'm most excited about. Uh, and this is the one that can generate maps and so on. This has data about the relations between things and the properties of things. So uh, birth dates, death dates, membership of organizations, family relations. So to give an example, on Wikipedia, there is an, exa there is an article about Lord Byron. There's a narrative uh, account of who he was and what he did. The article won't have his works, it will mention and quote his works, it won't have the full text of his poetry, but you can get almost all of that from Wikisource. Wikimedia Commons will have media relating to him, so it will have portraits, uh, maybe scans of his manuscripts, his signature, and so on. And Wikidata has his relations with other things, so family relations, uh, organizations he's a member of, facts about him uh, that you can query. And these things interrelate, so they link to each other. Commons provides the images that illustrate Wikipedia and Wikisource. Um, Wikidata knows that these things are related, so that the inter the, the intersite links between different language versions or different sites are maintained by Wikidata, because Wikidata knows that this person depicted in this image is the same person this article is about, is the same person who wrote these, these creative works. So that's a quick overview of what I mean by Wikimedia. Uh, and, um, people don't like the word ecosystem, but, but it's, it's sort of an ecosystem of, of information and culture. Any questions at this point about Wikimedia and Wikimedia projects? Gosh, thank you for that, Martin. I'm absolutely overwhelmed already. I know I'm going to be coming back to the recording of this session again and again. <laughs> to actually practice and try things out. And there's been lots of um, chat in the, uh, in the chat area as well. Scanning back, I haven't seen any questions. I've seen lots of great um, uh, URLs going in there. So if anybody would right. like to uh, put a question for Martin into the, into the text chat now, if you've got any queries at this stage. That, right, thanks, Leo. Is there, there an, an overview? overview? Um, yeah. Uh, the starting point would be to go to the front page of Wikipedia and scroll down because at uh, the foot of the page uh, is this list of projects as well as links to the different language versions of Wikipedia there are these sister projects and so if you click on these links it will give you a, a outline of, of what this is what it's trying to do how big it is and so on. Um, yeah, that would be my starting point. Um, I think <laughs> it's, it's why I do presentations like this to give people an overview and an overview from an educational perspective when uh, there isn't such a, a dedicated resource existing so far. That's great. It's really important for us, certainly as practitioners, to get that insight as well. Therese asks, are there any of these that are growing faster than others? Uh, Wikidata is growing incredibly quickly. Um, they're all gro these that are on screen are growing incredibly quickly. So I'll mention Wikiversity later on, which is kind of stagnating and not so much a success. And uh, Wikidata, it, it, like I said, it's the newest project and people are, are drawing in data from all sorts of free sources and part of my work here at Oxford is encouraging research projects to share their data on Wikidata so we can do queries and cross searches. And uh, 
so every time I give a presentation about these projects, the figures are out of date. But it, it's about 22 million things, could be people, events, organizations, that Wikidata has data about, but they can see it going up to 100 million in, in the foreseeable future. Um, uh, Wikimedia Commons will come on to that right next but that each time I do a presentation about it, it's got a million more files. And uh, yeah, Wikisource, Wikisource will be, it has hundreds of thousands of texts. It will be bigger than Wikipedia because its scope is out of copyright text and it, there's so much of that and it's, it's growing like a page a minute. So that will be enormous. That's, that's great and it's so important as well for us, given especially that we're um, uh, thinking in working in open access week this week um, that uh, you know people like you are approaching people to make sure that uh, their research project outputs are shared openly um, we have a question from Dom do they all have similarly similarly large degrees of multilingual input so that's kind of looking across um, the sites and the different um, geographical specific sites maybe yeah, good question. That um, it varies for from project to project. So, as you may be aware, there are about 290 different language versions of Wikipedia, but there are huge inequalities in the size and how many active users there are, and so on. And English and German are the biggest, um, and it, it's mainly North European languages. So, Chinese and Arabic which a billion people speak, and you'd hope would be big, big, they're, they're kind of underrepresented for various reasons. Um, Wikidata has been built up from in a multilingual way from the ground up. It's very cleverly done. And uh, so that's very, so it, it stores data about things separately from data about how they're known in human languages. So uh, somebody can put in, in Welsh, uh, Lord Byron is known to Welsh speakers as this, and uh, the, the, the relationship is a child of is known as this, and Ada Lovelace is known as this, and then, so they just need to put in some labels for things, and then they can get loads of data and, and uh, knowledge out of that. Um, and then Wikisource, again, it's smaller than Wikipedia, it's more uneven, but there are people putting ancient Arabic and Persian texts on Wikisource, and they're, they're, there's valuable stuff in lots of languages that, you, that is openly available there and nowhere else. Great, yeah. And, and oh, the, I noticed the question about diversity of the Wikimedia yeah. user base. So yeah, there is that, that problem that it, it is mainly uh, young white men in North Europe and North America. Some of that is cultural problems internal to a, an online community. Some of that is that a lot of the world just doesn't have broadband. You need broadband to be a contributor or in some part of the world there's censorship issues with people contributing to a free uh, project that has, that has information about all sorts of topics. Um, and the technology and access to broadband is a big part of it because you really need a desktop computer. Uh, it's much easier to, to edit these things than it's possible on a phone or a tablet. But it's much more difficult. And that in itself gives a big inequality. Uh, so there's not, like I said, it's, it's mainly North European languages like Dutch and English and German that are successes, and we really should be better representing uh, Chinese, you know, all the Indian subcontinent languages. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting challenge across the whole of education, really, isn't it? So it, it perhaps reflects uh, the reality of the sort of Western hegemony that we see in education generally, but that's, that's, that's fascinating. What's, what I really find is, is exciting is the fact that clearly things grow organically and, and yeah. you know, they're alive and thriving. That's, that's yeah. really good. That's, that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Shall I move on to the next, next section? Yeah, let's do that. Thanks. So from the perspective of people looking to share files or share educational stuff, uh, that's this section, and I'm mainly talking about commons, which like I've said, is a digital media uh, sharing site. Um, on this site, I've mentioned maps and diagrams and photos. So people are sharing images, including vector graphics, 
uh, short video clips, audio clips, educational text you can share, not through Commons, but uh, through Wikipedia itself, or Wikibooks, which I'll come to later, or Wikisource. You can upload scanned documents, so uh, a lot of what we do with, with libraries is uploading documents. And I've mentioned secondary data, and some interactivity is possible, not like you'd have with the virtual learning environment, but you can have different text that's made visible depending on what the user clicked on. So you can have a textbook with um, self-test questions to prompt the user to stop and think. But zip-based formats, we don't have a, a, a channel for sharing those yet. So I work with economists. They want to share simulations they've constructed in Excel or, or spreadsheets or uh, multi-layered uh, animated graphs and PowerPoints, and we don't share office formats or content packages from virtual learning environments. Uh, those are zip formats. It's technically possible to include viruses in them, and Wikimedia doesn't want to share any files that could give people a virus, it wants it to be impossible for people to get a virus from what they download. So some of the stuff that academics are most interested in sharing can't be shared yet through Wikimedia platforms. And if you've got a raw uh, table of primary data, well, that can't go on wicked data. That's not the right project. And there probably isn't a place for that. But smaller data tables you can include in, um, in documents or in wiki pages. But so we do get people to uh, contribute stuff. And it's time for a more visually interesting slide. People go and take photographs. Or they go to, to uh, public domain sources of images and upload them and use them to illustrate Wikipedia articles. And we're not just organically waiting for people to upload stuff. We have partnership arrangements with libraries, museums, archives, the world over. Um, and naturally, here focused on the Bodleian Library, and this is a partial gallery. You can see that there's maps, there's document scans, there's photos of physical exhibits. We are getting hundreds of thousands of digital files from heritage institutions and, and uh, again, from the British Library, the Bodleian Library, but also the New York Public Library, the National Archives of the States, and so on, so on, around the world, big and small institutions. And I should mention uh, Daniel Meachin, who is a scientist Wikipedian, has created a bot that takes figures from open access research papers. So these are diagrams, photos, short video clips, and uploads them to commons. So all these these files, these tens of thousands of open access files, hundreds of thousands of uh, files from cultural organizations, they're all available to illustrate Wikipedia articles or wiki books, books or, um, or any educational use anybody wants to put them to. And this is an advantage of open. So the Bodleian Library could put a, has a public um, image gallery of its digital images, and that's nice and useful, but having those images in the same authoring environment as the British Library collections and the National Archives of the United States collections and the Queensland State Library from Australia collections, that's, much more, um, that's a much more powerful open environment. Um, so in summary, so the numbers, as I said, is always changing 34 million files as of this week. Bear in mind they all have an educational or research purpose potentially. This isn't one of those image sites to which people are loading loads of selfies and pictures of their lunch and so on. It, it, it is for an educational purpose. And uh, so they, ought, they appear as local files in Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia projects. So you just need the name of the file uh, to, to use those files to illustrate your article. Um, and there's an upload wizard. So you can press upload and it takes you through the steps of selecting a license. You can, you can upload 40 files at once if you want. So you can have common tags and metadata across those 40 files and some variation. Um, but bigger bulk uploads are, are possible if you want. But bear in mind the, that it's particular kinds of files. Not, not all file types are possible. Um, if you go beyond the upload wizard, you can have incredibly rich metadata. So you can have a, uh, a visualization of data generated from code. And you could share the code and a link to the data or a little data table along with the, the, the animation and the code that made that animation. So you get have a perfectly replicable educational object or research output 
on Commons. That's an advantage over things like Flickr or the, just image sharing. This is not just for creating uh, image galleries, it's for supporting education and research. And for those like the Bodin Library, or could be a smaller uh, uh, project, you, there are analytics tools. Thanks to a volunteer programmer called Magnus Mansk, he created these tools that give you an overview of how many uh, views um, all of the files in a particular category are getting. So we know that three million files from the Bodleian are getting viewed on Wikipedia articles and, and Wikimedia projects this month. Um, so that's the end of that session about file sharing. Any questions about Wikimedia Commons? There were a couple of questions that came in, um, Martin. So Dom had asked, what's the ratio of human to bot editors across Wikimedia? OK, there's far more. Uh, so there are some bot editors. There, um, th there's millions of contributors, or m millions of uh, human registered accounts. If you look at the top 10 most active Wikipedians, only one is human. The other nine are bots that do things like automatically revert vandalism or uh, correct common typos. Um, uh, so yes, the, the number of bots is small. They all have to be improved to make sure they're not up to anything nasty. But yeah, they do a, a huge amount of work. And uh, yeah, it's very science fiction environments that we're working with. I've just had the message. Right. Sorry about this. I need to leave. Uh, I've had to reconnect. Is it possible? I'm on a live thing. Is it? You're still connected, Martin, but maybe if you just put um, your video off, um, that will okay. help with <laughs> <you> bandwidth. <laughs> yeah. Great, but we just need you to put your talk button on, so I'm hoping your video isn't also your mic. You meant just to, to pick your mic up again, you may need to come up to tools and audio and the microphone Sorry about settings. that. Sorry about that. I switched my microphone off to speak to somebody. So that was difficult. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I've, I've, I will continue. Sorry about the interruption. No problem, uh, thank you. Yeah. So was there any there was question one more about the there comments? There was one more question, yes, from Kelly. Um, and Kelly asked, how do the resources and files reach Wikimedia from the libraries? Are they harvested, or do the libraries contribute to their collection manually? There's a bulk upload tool. And uh, so I can transfer 1,000 files at once from the Bodleian to the Commons because I've, the, I've mapped the bulk export um, facility of the Bodleian to the bulk import software on Commons. So uh, with a, an arrangement where thousands of things have been shared, there are ways to do that. There, um, there's a number of different ways, because it's an open system, and people can build on different uh, uh, software tools. So people build on. Um, uh, so there's a tool where you can take a spreadsheet of metadata of files and upload the whole batch of files. There's different ways to do it according to the size of the project and the nature of the files. Thanks. That was all the questions that I saw come in. Right. I'm, I'm, I may have to move this computer. I may have to go onto Wi-Fi. So if you can ex excuse me, there may be a, a quick interruption in my connection, but I'll still be on. Sorry okay. about this. No, no worries. OK, that's fine. It sounds as though the phone's going as well. Everything's, everything's coming together, as it tends to do. <laughs> but it's good to see the interaction going on. Can I just remind people who are on Twitter um, if you are tweeting about the event and the things that we're learning um, today, please just add that OpenEd uh, SIG hashtag 
um, because we'll then be able to um, aggregate the discussions that are going on around around today too. Um, so thanks very much. There's been lots of active interest as well through through Twitter. Um, looks like Martin's coming back online again now. We're going to move on to the next uh, section here. Oh, sorry, Leo. Bye. Yeah, do catch up on the on the um, recording. Um, we'll make that available as soon as we can. Might be a, a good time as well to give you a quick link here um, to the Open Ed SIG community, because if things like uh, we're hearing about today really matter to you, then do join us in the Open Ed SIG community. Um, it's hosted by Alt, but you don't have to be an Alt member in order to, to join us. And uh, you'll see the information on that link there. Hello, um, can you hear me? Make, um, ah, you're back. Wonderful, yes, that's great. Yeah. Lovely. We'll pass back over to you. Sorry about this. I mean, I may need to... I just need to tweak my settings so I'm hearing you again. Great. Yes, if you use the okay, um, great. wizard. Yeah, great. Sorry about that. I was forced to move a few feet. Uh, so, <laughs> so I will move swiftly on. Uh, once I have the controls back. Sorry, um, oh, I'll sorry. sort this out right away. Just a second, sorry. Let's find you here. Yeah, because you come in as a different person. There we are. All right. right. Controls should be much. returned. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Very sorry about that interruption. Okay, if you are addicted to the internet and you're navigating around uh, Wikipedia and you come across this article, Internet Addiction Disorder, if you look at the talk page, follow that link at the top, so the talk page is about how, discussing how to improve the article, there are these two notices that this article has been improved by an educational assignment. And it's actually two different groups of students in different universities, one from the American University in 2012 and one by students from the University of Hull in 2014. So students have been allocated to improve this article uh, for course credit. And it turns out this happens a lot, as I'm someone who edits uh, psychology articles on Wikipedia and kind of despaired whether uh, Wikipedia's volunteer editors would ever get a good set of, uh, of properly referenced articles about psychology. And then the, the, the cavalry arrived that uh, lots and lots of the psychology uh, content on Wikipedia is actually being created by these student projects. So if you read about self and identity, you're probably uh, reading articles written by third years at University of Southampton, Psychology of Internet Use, University of Hull, there's a project at University of Kent about uh, you know, social cognition and ostracism. One student worked on his own on ostracism and didn't get any feedback. Shame. So it's not just psychology, that's my area of focus, but a lot of politics articles, a lot of um, areas where Wikipedia is traditionally weak, uh, politics, women's studies, uh, is having these, these nice, well-resourced articles uh, created by student assignments. Uh, so this is a map from Wikimedia UK of, uh, I think all of the blue universities have done at least something with Wikipedia. Uh, the green uh, universities are running courses now to improve Wikipedia and the gold ones, including Oxford, are looking into it and, and going to be doing something soon. Uh, it's not just the UK, this is an international program uh, with lots of countries involved and it started off in North America, Th these stats on the screen now relate to North America, uh, 14,000 students have been involved uh, adding 20 million characters. So a lot of Wikipedia is, is being written by learners and part of the, pro the promise of open education was it would, tr it would transform the relation between learners and resources and learners would become remixes and creators of resources uh, and that 
with Wikipedia as a platform is happening. And you get different things happening, and there's different anecdotes, I just like this one in particular. This is a, uh, someone who started a master's course, uh, and the first item on the first reading list she was given was the Wikipedia article on the topic. It said that it's Wikipedia, but the course leader said it actually is a good overview. And she said, I wrote this. In her previous course, in her uh, final year as an undergraduate, she'd been allocated to write the article, and she did, and, and she found it was reading, she mentioned it to the course leader, and so she gave a guest lecture in the master's course that she just enrolled in. And so th these things happen um, when, you, when you have students creating content. Uh, there's lots of uh, information for course leaders who want to do this. Uh, if you know where to look, and that link I've given there is a starting point, and I highly recommend, if you're interested in this, uh, getting in touch with Wikimedia UK. Wikimedia UK have networks of academics who are running these courses, and helpful Wikipedians like me, experienced Wikipedians who can uh, look at what students are doing and uh, support them online and kind of be their, their fairy godmother to watch over them. And uh, we can view our idea. So any questions about education assignments? I'm, I'm just so fired up by what I've just heard. <laughs> it's tremendous. Right. It's kind of, you know, I'm <laughs> gasping as I'm going through this. It reminds me of some TEDx, um, things that have been built on TEDx around translation and, and the opportunities in my discipline. Um, F f that sprung out of that, just having the opportunity to uh, um, translate into your own language. Fabulous. I can't actually see any questions that have been raised so far. I, I should mention, yeah, so some of these assignments are about writing articles, some are about uh, improving them. So as you saw, there was two uh, different uh, projects working one article, but there were also assignments about translation, uh, so translating into different languages or translating uh, or interacting with people on Wiki in a different language to get an, an authentic experience of using that language uh, for, a, for a purpose, for collaborating on work with people in a different language, or illustrating. So that you have sort of design students who are given the, the task, here's a, a pretty full article, create diagrams to illustrate the concept right. in it. So it doesn't oh, have you're to be giving me so many things. ideas here. For, we have a, uh, um, an academic community <laughs> called Uni Collaboration, where we do t tele collaborative projects. And you right. think of the potential of that with an international language learning um, yes, participation. Yes. Yeah, fabulous. Great. Shall I think I we're okay to move on. Yeah. Right. OK. Thank you. So, Wikibooks, far fewer people have heard of this, and it's a lot smaller, but I think it's a great project. Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, and that's, that's very constraining as to the writing style. You, ha you have to organize things in a particular way. You have to be very dry. You can't tell people what to do. You can't write a how-to or tutorial. And you can't write in a textbook style, which kind of takes people on a journey through the topic, a chronological or, or whatever you want uh, version of the topic. And you can't get the reader to stop and think and ask questions and so on. So Wikibooks aims to do that. It's more open as to what kind of text is allowed, and it, it's uh, creating textbook style content. And uh, yeah, only about 3,000 books, so much smaller, but a similar platform. Um, uh, and it's, it's materials at every educational level. So people working on preschool materials about learning numbers through C programming, we've got their all the way up to guides for postdoc geneticists on genome sequencing. And like Wikipedia, it's a work in progress. So a lot of stuff is, is incomplete. Most of it is incomplete. There's a mi minority of it which is really good, and there's some things which you think might be good, but, but turn out to be very bare. I just want to focus on a couple of, of assignments. Again, this is learner created. Um, oh no, so this next bit, I want to address sustainability. So I uh, found this resource created by a couple of US academics about the, in the, the history of the 20th century, how black voters were systematically disenfranchised and given less power. 
And I was reading this at the time of the Ferguson riots in the States and thought that a lot of people need to know about this and read this. Um, but what you can't see from this slide is actually, you can see that it's kind of a very old fashioned kind of design, but also that uh, what you can't see is that the links aren't ordinary hyperlinks. It's a flash navigation system, which doesn't work in a lot of modern browsers. So this is definitely not a sustainable resource. And the, it's unfinished. The, the, the academics did most of it, and then they went on to other things, other lines of work. I managed to get in contact with them and get them to add this, yeah, get them to add, um, oh, my star there, um, this Creative Commons license. There wasn't a, a copyright statement, but I said, please, can you put a free license on that will allow me to make a copy? And uh, they were OK with that, and so I could import it to Wikibooks. So Wikibooks is a platform for creating new uh, open textbooks, but you can also copy in freely licensed stuff from another source. And so this is a different interface. I've copied over the images as well. I haven't done all of it, and, and there's a sticking point because some of it is, is other people's copyright, so I can't copy. But this is more sustainable, I venture, that, 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 that um, the interface is more sustainable and people can edit this. Somebody could update this uh, with other visualizations or find other uses for the content. But I, I promised to learn the created content and this really impresses me, uh, this, this book on professionalism. Uh, so these are students in uh, University of Virginia on a professional ethics course. And they, I think working in pairs, write case studies of things, of uh, cases in professional ethics. And they've run this a few years in succession, and they've got nearly 200 of these cases. And they vary in quality, because it's, uh, it's a university assignment. It's difficult. Uh, uh, most of them do really well. Some of them struggle. But the, it's a bit like a Wikipedia article in that they outline the basic facts of the case, but they've been taught theory. They've been taught different concepts of professionalism. There's professionalism as in doing what your employer wants you to do, but there's professionalism as in uh, um, embodying the values that your employer stands for. And so you can apply different concepts. And they've been taught about organizational failure. So they apply some of that to uh, say where things have gone wrong. And it's, it's big headline things like uh, Snowden, uh, things we've seen in the news like the phone hacking scandal. Um, but it's a truly global perspective, things that maybe we haven't seen in the news in the UK, but being big news, uh, corruption stories, or whatever elsewhere in the world. And uh, like I say, most of it is really good. My, uh, my involvement as a bystander has just been to help with the layout and the wiki code, where the students have written good content, but uh, maybe the way the image is on the page. And I've added things like a search engine to this book. And uh, so, that's something that can happen as an educational activity. There's a, a similar activity on digital media that, uh, that students from the University of Stirling have done on Wikibooks to create a handbook um, with different students uh, allocated to different parts of the book. And here are a couple of links for if you want to consider doing it. So that there are guidelines you've got to kind of monitor the students, you've got to make sure they don't copy copyrighted um, to you from elsewhere, and they, they've got to be supervised. But there are more projects like what I've been discussing at that link. Um, and briefly, Wikiversity, uh, like I say, Wikiversity is more of a troubled project, and I'm more cautious in recommending it. But this goes to sustainability as well. Uh, academics at the University of Exeter run a, a economic lab. So they do, they simulate economics and finance activities in this uh, computer room. And they had a funded project to document the, these experiments. And instead of creating their own a, a separate site for it, they put it all on Wikiversity. And Wikiversity is very open indeed, so you can put all sorts of its scope includes anything basically that could support educational research. It's a, so it's a bit more chaotic. But they documented these classroom experiments on Wikiversity. And you may think, oh, that's not wise. They need a server that they control. Uh, they shouldn't be putting on something which has an edit button and that's publicly editable. People vandalize it. But what's actually happened is it's, we're now six or seven years after their funded project. This has been maintained. It's still being edited that people are making little tweaks, fixing typos. And the Wikiversity community 
you see it, it's, a, it's marked as a quality resource. They've recognized this uh, as something professional quality, and they showcase it. And if anything, they're too deferential to it. I don't think there's been as much change as the authors hoped. Um, and since my summary is short, I'll move on to that quickly. I've just got three slides. I realize that for us in the professional open education community, it can feel like a struggle uphill, and it can feel like one step forward and two steps back. And we mentioned the, um, the closing of, of learning object repositories. But in the big picture, we are winning. There's more open educational content being created. We're having things like Histopedia and the, the, uh, the mapping tool, which uh, give these amazing possibilities to create uh, open-ended educational things. And this is engaging the world. It's engaging billions of people in discussion and improving the quality of discussion. And it is transforming the relation between learners and learning resources. So the promise benefits the open education, they are happening. And just a case in point, the, this is the TRIP database, which is a, a database of medical sources. So it prioritizes um, research papers and, and review papers, but also has a, other kinds of resource like patient decision aids. And they've made a decision to include Wikipedia articles, not just any Wikipedia articles, but the ones that have gone through a quality review. I haven't mentioned quality review. That could be a whole other um, whole other webinar. But there are quality review processes on Wikipedia, and the top ones are quite demanding. And so the, this database lists the, the reviewed articles. I, I run a database of economics learning materials, and I catalog in Wikibooks, Wikiversity, Wikipedia material. If it's showcased, I think it's important. So we, we don't have to beat them or join them. We can acknowledge they exist and acknowledge that this work is going on. and Yes, it's, it's editable and vandalizable, but there is good stuff coming out of it. And finally, yeah, the, the, the successful open education platforms, it, it's, it's open. It's not repositories which are archives of zip files that are success. It's a different kind of site. And I think repositories serve the wrong, solve the wrong problem, that we don't need to preserve the integrity of the file for the long term. We need to preserve its value, which means preserving its relevance, its, its ability to change, putting the edit button on it. So these successful platforms, Wikipedia, Wikibooks, Wikiversity, they're not repositories of atomic objects. They're a web of knowledge with everything interlinked and everything editable, even commons. You can, you can change images. You can crop images, um, uh, fix color balance, and there's an edit history, so I can go back to what the image was like when it was first uploaded. But yeah, we are winning, and these kind of open platforms are successful. And that's what I commend to you, and there's uh, some uh, contact details to me. Any more questions? Wow, that was absolutely brilliant. We've had two absolutely amazing <laughs> alt um, open education webinars so far this year. I'm so excited about uh, where things are going. I, I, I tend to think that nobody in this room, when you said, you know, why, why put things in the open, said, why would you do that? I think we, we, we're all probably, most of us, very familiar with trying to persuade people to be more open than they are. So great to have mm. the feedback that we got there on um, Creative Commons. And, and generally, academics tend to want to work in the open, but we are um, constrained and sometimes literally um, told not to. Um, and yeah. that's probably just a part of the context in which we work. Um, but when we think of the university's mission to expand minds beyond just those students that are um, happen to be enrolled in our courses, um, then commitment to open practice is absolutely vital um, to that. Just scanning back for questions, I, I, lo I love what you said there about um, um, repositories as well, because that you know again tends to be the lockdown tends to be the norm. Um, and, and that really, as you said, answers the wrong question. Um, Dom asked a question here. Any thoughts on H5P as an alternative to Flash and Articulate for authoring content? I'm not aware of H5P. My apologies. So uh, HTML5-based format, I presume. Um, 
Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's an open source. Um, it resulted from a project, as far as I'm aware. Domon, do you have more information about H5P? I haven't actually used it. I've, I've seen it around. Oh, okay, you discovered it yesterday. So it, it is. It, it was the, the result of an academic project, as far as I'm aware, and it is HTML5. Uh, I know it's on the, you know, on the um, must investigate list uh, for many of us. But so so things that are in so terms I don't of format think that's a facility. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's the ability to share that kind of. So if you're talking about mixing interactivity with video with documents, there isn't that ability to, to share a package of that content through Wikimedia yet. It'd be more low tech. So you you could create a document and embed a video in it, and uh, and. So there's more native interactivity coming to Wikimedia. Like um, so, so far graphs or maps in Wikipedia have just been an image. You get a, you you use a map making tool, a graph making tool to make a, a, a GIF or ping, and you upload that, and that illustrates the article. And we're moving towards something interactive, where you have a graphing tool or mapping tool, and you you give it a query. You know, show me this part of the world with this location highlighted to show where Oxford is in England. And um, I hope we'll move to more things like that. Rather than having um, one view of the periodic table of elements with every, each element highlighted, so more than 100 files, there should just be one interactive visualization of the periodic table. And you just sit in a different query to it, depending what article it's embedded in, and get a different element highlighted. So I'm hoping we can move to away from static formats to more interactive, queryable formats, and um, enabling this kind of interaction. But we can't um, share things at the moment which have just any HTML or JavaScript or whatever in. Again, because of security and mm -hmm. and how that that might interact with other things. It, I'm, I'm fascinated that Therese straight away found the Wiki, Wikipedia article on on H5P, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's building up in the chat. <laughs> so we're, this is kind of a point where open source, open access, open education come together, isn't it? This is you know a, a point of contact for the open community. Really, is actually that we all need each other. Um, that you know, we have perspectives to bring to bear to have those discussions, um, and I'm, I'm sure this is <laughs> right. Dom found it, Terry's mm -hmm. copied it. Wonderful. Together, you know, it's a hive mind yeah. going on here. It's a marvelous, marvelous thing to see. Well, mandated open access um, is a huge opportunity uh, for the, now. So much, so many research outputs have a Wikipedia compatible license, a, a CC BY or, or attribution share alike license that they can be copied into Wikipedia articles or the figures so that that uh, media importer bot is taking those figures. And they are used in creating lay summaries of uh, the edit. So, so there's a huge opportunity suddenly to create educational materials from research outputs. Wow. This is, this is, there's so much to digest <laughs> in this webinar. Mm -hmm. I'm re very grateful to you, Martin, for um, agreeing to, to lead this for us. Um, just before we finish, um, if, there's, if there are any more questions, please do get them into the chat. If anybody wants to um, add, sorry, I'm just going to move to the last few um, slides. So we've got a very final slide, I think, here. Yeah, so this is it, thanks to the Association for Learning Technology that we've been able to um, run today's session and that we'll be able to archive the output and make that available. And of course, that um, will be available uh, under a CC license um, should anybody want to, uh, to reuse or repurpose. It's, it's all about making, making our work more usable and shareable um, and not not limiting ourselves to uh, small audiences. Um, and let's just also share with you, if we haven't seen it already, where the Open Ed SIG lives. Um, we do have a forum here. Um, all right, OK, there's a message from Therese here to finish off. And that is, if my university's library wanted to commit, wanted to 
um, contribute, could we contact you? Yes, please. And Martin, yes, like and we like <laughs> we like sharing arrangements up in as many places as possible. Yes. Wonderful. That's great. Well, I hope this this webinar is just the start of yet another um, run, and, and I look forward to uh, maybe um, getting involved in and uh, being more familiar with uh, the work of Wic Wikimedia in general, um, rather than just little bits of it I shall be exploring, and I'm sure many others of us here today will be. Great. Okay. So thank you all very much today for coming. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. I'm just going to switch the recording off now.